Welcome back, it's the Clay Golem here. We're in Foundry VTT. We're going to do something slightly different in this video, something we haven't done before. And to be honest, I've been avoiding for a while <laughs> because it's uh, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit uh, a little bit complex compared to some of the things that we've done. Um, uh, but I did want to make sure we're doing something else rather than constantly looking at traps. But there's been some really good feedback on that stuff. So thank you for everybody who's uh, put into that. Um, so we're in Foundry VTT, we're in my test world. Um, I've got Ron Barr up here, whatever his name is, yeah, Ron Barr. Uh, he's a mage. Uh, one of the things we've not looked at is summoning. So summoning creatures, um, find familiar, conjure animals, and of course druids have got their spells and things. Um, there's a couple of easy ways to do that. Ron Barr says he's casting his spell, off he goes, he casts conjure animals. Um, but he's concentrating lovely jubbly we haven't got any spell effects or anything on it because um it's not actually doing anything apart from using a slot and then we say right what you're summoning or you're choosing to summon a couple of boar and we can drag those out it works um as the dm with something like summon um with some of the summoning things that are under my control and i'm going to move them on their turn etc add them to the combat tracker uh, nice and easy etc um, but we can make it a bit more whizzy, can't we? And this is the bit that I wanted to kind of look at. Now, one of the issues with summoning spells is there can be potentially a lot of things that they're summoning. <laughs> uh, and that's where it gets tricky. Uh, well, no, not tricky. It's one of the challenges of it. So we're going to be looking at a couple of uh, modules to do this for us. So let me go to my manage modules, show you again. I'm in my test world, so I've taken off everything I don't need. Um, it really messes stuff up when I do that, but that's why I use a test world. Okay, so what we need is, uh, first of all, warp gate is going to help us warp in, so teleport in or summon in uh, tokens when we want it. So we need that in the background. Uh, socket lib is just one of the supporting modules that we've seen lots of times comes in we're bringing sequencer in to play some animations of spell effects etc with our various things uh, and we're using jb2a to create those um, rather to provide those animations that sequencer will play for us and the one we've not looked at before is foundry summons so this is something that is going to add more complexity or more uh, capability to our summons, depending how we want to do it. Now, I have actually, I, don't be shocked, all right, so make sure you're sitting down. I've actually done some prep for this one <laughs> because it is a bit complicated and we're going to be looking at some macros. Um, and so I needed to make sure they were all working rather than you sitting here for an hour watching me fail to write a macro. Uh, I'm not a coder, uh, so it has taken a bit of fiddling for me to get this working correctly. Uh, so closing that, uh, down in my, oh, oh God, we're, we're now concentrating, stop concentrating, you don't need that anymore, go away. Not duplicate, ah oh dear, break concentration, thank you. There we go. Um, so I've got some bottom left hand corner, I've got some macros here I've written and the very first one is summon wolf. If I just click on that, it gives me a little token and I can just pop him out. There we go, there's our wolf, lovely jubbly, ready to go. Easy peasy. So what does this macro actually do? Let's edit this macro and have a look. And this is using, this is one of the first, well, they're all using warp gate to summon that token and allow us to place it. So hopefully you can see that it's quite small on screen. I will try to zoom in for all of these so that you can see them. This just says, let the summon await for warp gate spawn. And then I'm putting the name of the creature I want to spawn. I just go to my actors tab. Um, Sorry, this is a mess, but it is my test world. I created a folder just called Summon Animals, and I've put Ape, Boar, Giant Spider, and Wolf in there. So here I've got the name that I want to summon, and I can change that to Ape. Execute, and now over here I'm putting an Ape out. Lovely. Easy peasy. It works. Uh, the problem is I effectively need a macro for every Every single one of these creatures. Now when you look at summon beasts for example, uh, sorry conjure animals, when we look at the spell conjure animals 
it can bring in one beast of a challenge rating of two or lower, or two beasts of a challenge rating one or lower, four beasts of a half challenge rating, eight beasts of a quarter or lower. So potentially it's bringing in lots of the same creature, but also how many beasts are there of a CR, a challenge rating of two or lower? And the answer is there's tons of them. If we just quickly pop to the SRD here, uh, look up monsters, uh, bring up the monsters SRD on the left here, and we go to beasts. Yes, of course, they're not all less than uh, CR2 or lower, but there's loads of them. Now, we don't want a macro for every single one. That's silly. So that's one of the challenges we're going to try and solve. Um, but also, when I run this macro and it's just bringing in my ape, I get no effects or anything like that. Uh, it's not that much more efficient than just finding it over here and doing it that way. <laughs> It's just a macro to be able to do it instead. So let's get rid of those. So we want to elevate that to the next level and put an animation on it. So let's try this one and put this wolf out. We get a little summoning animation. Okay, now that animation is taken straight from JB2A so we can have whatever we want. Let me just summon another one just to show you. There we go, lovely. So right click on edit macro just to show you what this is doing. And we've seen this similar kind of macro before when we were looking at effects um, with defreds and things like that. So we've still got our opening line that allows us to actually bring that in. And then we've got a new sequence. So a new sequence, we want to give it a small delay so it's not playing immediately as the token goes down. We want it to play an effect and we're defining what that effect is from JB2A. Now, just as a reminder how we do that with JB2A in, with my, on the left-hand side over here, where you can see we've got this show sequencer database, and this shows all of the animation sequences available to us. For us, it is, I've got it in list view, um, we've only got JB2A installed, but it will show everything, and we can go through here and we can find something we like, you know, this one runs for too long, but we could absolutely use that. Um, we could use, let's use that one. Okay, so I'm going to replace our animation with that. I can click on just to the left of that play button. We've got this little, uh, looks like a little hamburger. Um, and we can click on that, and that's going to copy the name of this. And then in here, where I've got butterflies, I can just paste that different effect in instead. All right, so that's all, that's how we're choosing what, what effect we want. And we're going to play that effect at the location of this summon. So wherever we put this token down, um, we've got a bit of scale on there. And then we want to play that animation. So uh, I don't need to save it before I execute it. Click execute, put down another one. Boom, we've got that different animation. Okay, so that's relatively straightforward. Uh, and it looks a lot nicer when we're summoning animals um, you know, to have a little animation when we plop them down. Certainly nicer than just dragging them out from over here. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. It's looking a bit nicer. Um, lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, the next thing we want to do is look at this Foundry Summons. Okay, so if I use Foundry Summons macro, it's bringing me up a list of the things I can summon. Uh, so, for example, I can choose a, a wolf. And I can choose how many over here on the left side. So I can say I want four wolves. One, two, three, four. In they come. Okay, so this is a different way of doing it. We haven't got the animation on here. Let me show you what this macro is. This macro is very simply let the summon await for the foundry summons and open its menu called scope. Now, I know that might seem confusing, but if I go to our compendiums on the left hand side here, because I've got the foundry summons installed, it gives me this um, compendium which has some macros already in it. So all my macro down there is doing is actually running, uh, is running this macro, foundry summons, um, but it's adding it on. Uh, it's adding it to my macro down here using the warp gate to do it. Okay, so that's pretty much all it's doing. So this is where things start to get a bit more complicated um, is we want to do stuff 
uh, and build upon that, but have a nice menu system where our where we know what our choices are that we can summon, rather than having to go through the entire of the monster compendium, all of the beasts, working out which ones we can and which ones we can't. So it'd be really nice if we can do that. All right, so, um, yeah, all that's doing is opening that up for us uh, and giving us that list. Now, what's this list here? Why is this list only got the four in it? Now, it happens to conveniently match my four in this folder, but that is not looking at that folder. Let me go to the uh, configure settings for foundry summons. And the very first thing at the top here is the summoning sources. So if I put that back to default, which is the monsters SRD and save changes. And now I run that macro. It hasn't done it. No, <laughs> I, I know why it hasn't done it. Let me do it the other macro. <laughs> uh, gone wrong again. Uh, let me go to this one. Uh, and if we open the summoning menu from this way, this is, oh, it's still doing it because I changed, I've already changed the macro to do what I want it to do. Um, so unfortunately I've, I've messed that up. Um, it might be because I did have this, it's not, it's not an issue. It's nothing to worry about because it works perfectly, but I think it's to do with it not picking up the changes um, until I return to setup and come back in. So let me just go back in and then I'll see if I can show you what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so hopefully now, brilliant, right. So it's not showing me those creatures now. What it is trying to do is it's trying to load the entire of the SRD here. Um, and it does have a little bit of issue with that. Don't, don't worry about these little glitches because we're totally gonna get around them. Um, so again, even that one, it's trying to load everything from the SRD and um, there's quite a lot in there, uh, so it has a is having a bit of a, a bit of a glitch. Don't worry about it. Uh, right, so back to those options. Com uh, not configure controls, you muppet. Um, back into Foundry summons. What I want to do is I want to get it to pick from just a particular source of things. Now I've created a new source. Now just want new source called Summon Beasts. But this is not my actor folder called Summon Animals. It pulls from a compendium. So if I want to only pull monsters or creatures from a particular group, I need to put them into a compendium. So let's have a look at that. I did tell you it starts to get a little bit complicated, but once we've done it, it's quite easy. So you can see at the bottom here on my right hand side, I have got a compendium that I created. I just went to create compendium. I called it Summon Beasts and just hit Create Compendium. And then here it is. I literally dragged my actors from my Summon Animals over into this. Now I could uh, I could drag a zombie and add it to that list. So I can put whatever I want in here. Now I've called this sum Summon Beasts because I want it to relate to when we use the Summon Beasts, sorry, what's the actual Conjure Animals spell? I will run the conjure animals macro that will only pull creatures from i've called this summon beasts it's probably because it does summon beasts i probably should call this conjure animals in fairness so i want to pull from a compendium that says here's all the creatures that you can access when you cast that particular spell so i can do that so i created this compendium um, which means when i go to configure settings i have that compendium available up here uh, and I can then just, if I want to, just select that compendium. Now, of course, I probably want a compendium for Conjure Elementals. I want a compendium for um, Find Familiar. I want a compendium for... So I can create all those different compendiums and select them all on here. So Foundry Summons will look at all of those compendiums and get the list of every creature in all of those compendiums. Uh, you're probably already seeing a, potentially a slight issue with that. We'll get to it. Don't worry. So let's have a look at this macro uh, again. So all this is doing is running that Foundry Summons macro, which opens that lovely little menu that enables us to pick what we want. And you can see zombies now because I put it into the compendium. It's now available here. 
Now I can sort these animals um, by their CR rating, which is really, really useful um, if you want to do it or have it alphabetically. So you'll probably know that if you've got a mage that likes to use conjure animals, they'll have their favorite animals that they like to bring in. Uh, apes tend to be quite popular because of their versatility. Spiders, you know, they're climbing around on walls, whatever it might be. Um, we can select them from there, but it's really nice to be able to go. Actually, I can do it by CR rating. Um, lovely. Uh, you can also select which token is actually doing the summoning. Now on here I've got obviously a couple of zombies as well as uh, Ronbar. Now I do believe that if I just close this, if I have Ronbar selected and I run this, it automatically says the selected token who's doing the summoning is Ronbar. Now that's going to become important as we go on with our next couple of stages. Um, and so, yeah, again, I can just pick ape from here and away we go. No animations because we're doing this in a different way. Whew, we keeping up? We OK? <laughs> you have the great advantage of being able to rewind the video, watch bits again. I think this is probably one it's quite important that I put some, uh, some um, you know, place markers in the uh, in the video for you guys to come back and look at. All right. So um, I've got this one here instead which does something very similar to that um, and this is this is where I've tightened up to say that I only rather than foundry summons picking from any particular compendium I've set it in the settings which one this one will only pick from the one compendium I've asked for so let me go back to configure settings and I'm going to say actually I am happy for you to pick from every compendium we have so if I run this now, it's going to get stuck loading because there's an awful lot of things for it to bring in. If I run this one, my number four specific compendium, it still works. And it's only bringing in from that one compendium. So rather than bringing up every, all of the summon elementals, all of the find familiar, all of the uh, conjure animals ones it's only looking at conjure animals for us so how did we do this okay so getting slightly more comp i mean I, I know there's only a couple of lines here but it's getting slightly more complex with our macros so what we're doing here is we're starting off by telling it which compendium we want this macro to look at and we only want it to look at the compendium that is world.summon beasts OK, now this name here is not this name over here. It's not just the name of the compendium. I'll show you how to get that in a moment. Um, and then we want to uh, make sure that when we're doing this summoning, we are we're, when we're calling that menu, we're calling it using the contents from that compendium. So we said the compendium is this summon beasts one and we want the object to equal the game pack for that compendium. So everything in that compendium. And then when we open the menu, only open the menu using the object, which is the compendium that we've summoned from here. <laughs> yeah, if you're not used to coding, that's probably really confusing, but just it's on screen. Copy it. <laughs> it works. So how did we get this particular word here? All right, so when we're in Foundry, if we press uh, it's F11, no, F12, F12 it is, uh, we get this wonderful um, uh, console, that's the word, on the side here. And we can use this console to actually pull out the, uh, the information that we need. And you can see it's kind of telling us, you know, Foundry summons, updating index and everything, all these exciting things it's doing for us. Um, but the command that we want to use, you can see I've already used it here. And what I want to do is I'm looking for the game packs. So I want game dot packs with an S and it's the keys that I'm after. So I know it's really small down there. I'm literally typing game dot packs dot keys, open bracket, close brackets and press enter. Again, I'll try and zoom in on that part of the screen for you so you can see it, but it might be a bit blurry. Um, what that does when I do that, it brings up this thing, you know, what the heck is this? 
but there is a tiny little arrow next to all of these blue words. And if I click on that, bam, this suddenly expands and this starts to list uh, all of the, the things that we're looking for here. So um, I, what I'm looking for is the name of my compendium. So look, here we go. Number 13, it happens to be 13, lucky for us. Um, and this is my Summoned Beasts compendium and the value is what I actually want. So it is world.summon-beasts. Okay, so it's, it's close to the name of my compendium, but it's not exactly the same. So that's somewhere where you might put it in and go, why is it not working? It's because you need to make sure you're using that. Now, if you look at some of the other compendium names, um, like the heroes, it's dnd 5 eheroes uh, Under the normal monsters, it's dnd 5 e monsters because that's the, that's, that's the, the that, you know, that's the default ones that are in there. Um, you can also see there's ones for, for you know, for uh, my testing world and things like that where we've got all of these other ones in here. So everything's in here. So you will end up with a list of your compendiums in here and it's those keywords that you want. So that's how we get that. Now if I press F12, I can get rid of that again. So what we have is this is only pulling from that compendium that we've identified using F12. We can pull that name out there. It's only going to select those monsters. So execute the macro. Here is our selection of monsters, including that zombie. Now, just to prove the point, if I go to my actors tab and I go to my summon animals folder, we don't have the zombie in there. It's not pulling it from there. Um, I know I've got zombie down here, but it's not pulling shambling mound and things. It's not pulling it from the actors tab. It's definitely only pulling it from my summon beast compendium. Uh, so that works. Beautiful. Lovely. Really, uh, really good. Yeah. Um, but we still don't have, we stick a zombie out. Um, we still don't have, stick him down here. Boom. Yep. In he comes. Lovely jubbly. We do not have uh, any animations on here. So that's going to be the next thing we want to look at is being able to select from a particular compendium the amount of creatures that we want and it create animations on there. Now, of course, we uh, we, we talked about the fact that we don't want individuals' uh, macros for summon wolf and then summon bat and then summon badger because it gets unwieldy. Um, having a specific compendium one means that you may have a macro just for each of the individual spells. Now, what you do with that and how you choose to use that is up to you. As the DM, you could have those all saved in, potentially, in a compendium called Summoning. So you just open the compendium, a compendium find the right spell you want, um, and then click it, and it will automatically run this macro to do this for us. That's one fairly tidy way of doing it. You might also choose to... Um, give that macro to the player so that the player is then making their choices and doing it themselves. That's up to you. One thing I haven't tried yet, and it might be worth a try, is to seeing if we can append that macro onto the spell. So when we cast a spell, it automatically runs this macro. Now, in theory, I've only just thought of that, but that's a logical step to take. Um, so we might do that at the end of the video and see if that actually works, because um, that will join these things together reasonably seamlessly. But let's carry on because we have a, another macro to look at. Now this is the same as what we've just done but attempting to put on the um, animations as well. So this looks quite complicated but it's only really compiling what we've done before with a couple of small little changes. So first of all we are telling it which compendium we want, uh, making sure that we're bringing in the creatures in that compendium we do have an extra bit here so this bit at the end here we've got an option here to say no animation equals true in other words do not play any animation already associated with this actor or, or any any animations that's coming from anywhere else don't do it because we're going to create our own one we've then got our normal summary through foundry to summon creatures sorry to open that summoning menu only using that compendium and then what we're doing is we're saying let the summon token be the token that we've identified from that menu okay so we're just making sure that for our animations we're going to be selecting the right bit 
Now this piece here, some of you may, if you know a bit of coding, you might automatically recognize this. This is a for loop. So it's just going to create a loop between this curly bracket and this curly bracket where it's going to go round and round and round and do the same thing repeatedly for number of times that we have summon amount. So if we're summoning three, it's going to loop three times. If we're summoning seven, it's going to loop seven times. So that's all that does. Uh, you don't necessarily need to understand how it works, just that it does work. <laughs> so it's going to basically say we're going to start counting from zero and we're going to carry on looping while this integer i, this uh, variable i, is less than the amount summoned. So once this gets to, if we're summoning six creatures, once we get to, we've done six times, it will break the loop and it will go on to the next instructions. Uh, there, are any, no, there aren't any, so we, it will just stop. So within that loop is where we're going to play our effect. So again, we want to start a new sequence. We're going to put a slight delay on. We want to create an effect. We're going to be using this JB2A um, effect for us. We're going to play it at location for the summoned token for the each individual token. So if putting down four tokens, they're going to appear obviously in four slightly different places. So we want to make sure it's playing it for each of those uh, lo each of those tokens at that token's location. So that's why this looks slightly different. Uh, we've got a normal scaling of that object. We're going to wait for that um, animation to finish before it breaks out the loop or goes into the next one. We are doing an animation and we want to run that animation again on that specific token. If we're bringing in four, we want it to play on the specific token we're looking at, token number one, for example. Uh, want to make sure we've got opacity one. When I did this before, sometimes the tokens will appear invisible, and I don't mean they've got the hide trait on. I mean they're invisible. <laughs> they, you can't see the token. You can't get the token back. Um, so to cure that, using opacity of one that says definitely make this visible, and then we're going to play that animation. So if we're putting down four creatures, we're going to go, all oh, right, okay. If we're on the first creature, we're going to play this animation. That's the animation we're going to play play we're going to play it on the same location as the first token um, we're going to play the animation on the first token and then once we're done we're going to go back and it's going to go right now the second token we're going to do the same thing but we're going to play we're going to center this effect on the second token not the first one and we're going to play that animation on the second token and then once that's done it's going to go to the third go back loop again to the third one same again we're going to put the effect on the third location and then actually run it animate it on that third location so that's what that means um, that's how that works again you don't need to necessarily understand it obviously the more you understand it the more able you are to make your own tweaks and stuff um, copy it <laughs> it's right there for you okay so if I execute this one just move my stuff over to one side. If I execute this, I get my selection of creatures. Uh, let's bring in some apes. I'm going to do apes, and actually I'm going to do three of them. So I'm going to summon three apes, and when I click this, they all get the animation on. Okay, so it's not just animating the first one. It's doing it on all of them, which is great. We can do that again. Let's bring in um, two giant spiders. Uh, let's pop them in the tower. Uh, watch for the animation. Bam, there it is. And this is what I meant by, you know, oh, maybe it's slightly out. Just tweak it. It's really not a big deal. So that's a really nice way of doing it. We get some animations, etc. Uh, that's really good. Now, um, a slight confession is um, this video, you may have noticed there was a bit of a jump earlier. When I had the uh, console open on the right hand side, it stuffed my video. I'm assuming that's what it was. Uh, things went all a bit squiffy. So that's why you had the image of that console up um, nice and close and big so you could see it. So I apologise if there was a bit of a disconnect between what I was saying and what you were seeing. Um, but then it went on to destroy all of this part of the video. So I've had to re-record this. So again, if it's a little bit disjointed, uh, my apologies for that. Um, I was very frustrated when I was editing it. It's sort of like, hang on a minute, I've got all the words and it's frozen all of the images. It just stopped recording uh, new footage only recording the audio which was 
bonkers. Okay, so is there anything else that we want to do? Uh, I think that's pretty good. I think that's where we need to be, at least uh, that we've got some really good fundamentals there. So we ha I haven't tried, but we could try if we open up Ronbar here. I'm going to, I'm going to actually do it on his spell. I'm going to look at his, he's got all the spells, isn't he? Conjure animals. So I'm going to look at his conjure animals. I'm going to edit this. Now, bearing in mind, I'm editing the spell on the character. I'm not editing the spell in the SRD or anything like that. So it's only going to affect this one character. But this is a, uh, a proof here. Um, we got effects and things like that. Now, what I don't have installed on my test thing is the um, is the item macros, which in theory would say when you use this item, because a spell is just a type of item, the same as a battle axe is a type of item, etc. When I use this item, um, also run that macro. So I'm not going to be able to test it in this right now. Uh, so I might uh, pause the video and have a little play and see if I can get that to work. And I'll be back in a few minutes and see if that works as, hopefully, <laughs> as we want it to. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've had a little play. Um, and I was thinking item macro might be the way to go. But I made a little bit of a mistake there. We don't need item macro. Um, so just to show you the list of updated modules we've got on here. Um, so I've added on MIDI QOL um, with the dynamic active effects that kind of comes part and parcel of it really. Um, and just because of my settings in MIDI QOL, it wanted me to have Monk's token bar. I don't need Monk's token bar. I don't need that on at all. But MIDI QOL is going to do this for us. So let's open our character sheet, um, find our conjure animals and edit this. Now again, I'm editing the version of the spell on the character, not the one in the SRD. So it's only going to work for this individual. But of course, you can apply this principle anywhere else. Now, while we're in here, we've got our description, details, effects, and we've got the MIDI QOL tab that we didn't have before. Uh, if I click on this button just on the right to edit the macro associated with this, this is our macro. How did I get it in here? I literally copied and pasted it from the macro down there. Okay, so now this macro is directly attached to this item of conjure animals that Ron Barr owns. So I've only updated this one. Um, and then by clicking on this little plus uh, icon here, this is where it brings up iPhone macro and we select when to run that. So there's lots of different um, times within the process that you can choose to run that macro uh, depending on whether you know before a saving throw is made after a saving throw is failed before you've targeted creatures whatever it might be um, so you, you there's a number of different options here if I just go with all so it will run it regardless okay so that's now on there I can close that and let's run conjure animals so click conjure animals straight away it is bringing up our box that we want and I can say I'm going to summon a giant spider and I can stick that up there lovely it's asking it's asking about the number of targets which isn't relevant and we can turn that off again uh, so yeah we can run the macro directly from there now the spell itself needs a bit of updating um, but we've done in previous videos it's nothing to do with this specifically but for example i would like it to play an animation on ron bar when he casts it we can do that we've done that before um, using some of the other uh, mods that aren't installed on here but it just shows that actually we can make it nice and easy casting conjure animals sort yourself don't click on the picture <laughs> sort yourself out we're going to bring our three in here and we're going to get the animations on both of them as they come in don't need the roll if I do the roll it brings it up again which is a bit silly but that's because and I'll need to tweak it I'll need to have a play I just didn't want this video to take forever to produce it and that's the reason why it's doing that is because of this all setting I need to find a better one um, and I'm just not sure which it's going to be so before check hits but well, there is no hit after targeting is complete that might do it let's test that that might actually do it. Uh, discard the previous. Um, just complete the previous. Okay, so summon this one. 
off he goes he's cast it and his concentrations come up but it has brought the box up again several times hmm it's not quite where we need it to be is it so it still reckons it's running It's running it repeatedly, and that's purely because of that setting. Stop doing it. <laughs> cancel. Cancel, cancel. Yeah, it's just opening loads of them. So we need to fix that, because uh, that is terrible, actually. I was going to leave you guys to play with it, but uh, that's really not going to be what we want. Um, only called once a template is placed. No, we don't want to do that. Before targeting is res resolved. Uh, before damage rolled. See, a lot of these are not applicable to what we're doing. Um, before suspend at the start, before await item card. Because uh, we really want it to finish everything and then allow us to place it. Um, so that it's doing it, it's doing the concentration, it's playing any animations on him and then on you know on the on the, the caster and then does it. Um, I'm not sure what cleanup is. I'm not sure what that is, but that might be what it does right at the very end. Again, why am I rolling? Oh, it's asking me to consume the spell slot. Good. We've cast that. Now it brings it up. Now I can put my zombie out. Brilliant. I don't need to roll again. That's fine. Maybe that's what it is. I've now got multiple instances of concentration on, of course. Break concentration. Thank you very much. He's all good. Let's try that one more time and hopefully that will work. Let's clear the chat. Uh, that conjure animals won't work because that's not the one I altered. Conjure animals. Select any number of targets. Well, that doesn't make necessarily make any sense, does it? Now it's going to ask us to cast a spell. It has applied his concentration. Now I can put out my one ape. Job done. There we go. Okay, so that's going to work for us. It means it's going to complete all the other bits. And when it gets right to the very end, then it will bring up the summoning journal for us. Sorry, that was a bit of a journey. Um, as you can see, I clearly hadn't... <laughs> I hadn't experimented with that one before starting to record this section. Um, but you can see part of the process. Sometimes it's just trying these things um, to get it to work. Um, but there we go. So we've got the macro actually on the character. So what we could do, of course, absolutely is under our items we could create each of those summoning spells and make sure those are the ones that are assigned to our characters so that when they cast it it's going to do everything for them obviously we can add the animation onto the actor itself if you want to once it's done concentration and everything else it's going to bring up that table so that we can select what we're going to be uh, you know what we want to summon now for me personally I am probably going to stick with, maybe not on my bar down here, but maybe in a compendium, I'm going to stick with having the spells down here so that I can ask them what they want to summon and then I can bring them in. Uh, it means also I'm placing them where I want, not necessarily where the player wants because they can get a bit tricksy with ranges and everything else. Um, so, a bit of a rambling one. hope that's been really useful for you um, if you're doing summoning. I mean, it depends on your player base and what they're doing. But at some point, somebody will summon. So it's probably worth kind of having this thing set up. Now, it's a great shame that what I can't do is create a compendium, export it, and say, here's the spell compendium for it. Just, just import that into your own game, and then you've got it. You can't do that. Um, Foundry don't allow you to share compendiums. Um, you can share them between your individual games on your foundry, but I can't share my compendiums with somebody else on their foundry. Uh, I understand that, or otherwise, you know, I'm creating modules and giving them to people when everything else, it becomes quite difficult with uh, copyright and all of those kind of things. Um, so I understand it. It's just a bit frustrating. It'd be really nice to be able to do it for this. Um, there probably is a way that you can trick foundry into thinking that, you know you own that compendium it's going to be complicated so you're going to have to do the hard work yourself sorry about that um let me know what you think are you going to use this are you going to stick with just dragging actors out because let's face it that's not exactly difficult is it it's like yeah you summoned a zombie there it is <laughs> um you know and you might have it in folders so you go yeah you're summoning a wolf yeah there it is uh, it's entirely up to you of course it just adds a little bit of pizzazz it's a little 
little extra thing that we can do if we can be bothered to be perfectly honest it's not impacting the game very much um, it's just giving a bit a bit more a little bit more organization and take some of the surprises out when they say oh, I'm going to summon a such and such and you're like are you even allowed to do that well you've already done that research in the background so yeah, let me know if you're going to use it or not. Um, give the video a like, would be much appreciated. If you're watching this video and you've been watching a few of them and you're not subscribed, please do so. Uh, we're heading towards the 500 uh, landmark um, of uh, for subscribers, which is kind of like the first kind of big point to get to. It would be really nice to hit that, um, you know, sort of within the month. So please do subscribe. Uh, remember, if you want to be notified of more videos, click the little bell icon. If you don't want to be spammed by my video notifications, subscribe anyway. Just don't tick the bell icon. And then why you, it's easy to find me when you want to look something up. It really helps the channel, even if it's not spamming you. Thank you very much, guys. You take care and have fun.